Hi everyone, today on Costa Ridiot I'll bring a format that I haven't seen so much on YouTube and I think that could be very interesting. Today I rank all the coaster that I've missed during my trips to the theme parks. At the time I'm recording this video is December 2021 and I visited all the major parks in Italy that are Gardalan Park, Mirabilandia Park, Etnaland, Movieland, Cinecittà World, Magicland, Cavallino Matto and Leolandia. Plus, the only park not in Italy that I visited is Disneyland Paris. I'm missing only two parks in Italy and these two parks are Miragica in Puglia that has closed at the end of the 2018 season and since that date is an abandoned park and all the attractions in it are standing but not operating and Zoo Safari Fasanolandia also in Puglia, that I hope to have the chance to visit in the next years. Movieland was also on the list of my missed parks, but uh, I'm a lifeguard and uh, during the last weekend of September I've been summoned for the Italian open water tour at the Garda Lake. The race was on Sunday, so on Saturday I've gone to Movieland, so I got the credit of Diabolic in Vertigo, which in my opinion is the best of the coma coaster in Italy. So a top 10 wouldn't be a top 10 without some honorable mentions. The first mention is uh, Montagna Russe at Fasanolandia, that is a 1986 galaxy coaster from SDC. I don't know what to expect from this coaster since I haven't ridden such an old one yet. The layout is not exciting but I heard that it runs pretty smooth for its age, but anyway I don't think that this will be an ultra elite coaster. The second honorable mention is uh, Spinning Madness at Fasanolandia in Puglia that I expect to be very bad because uh, it's a Fabri Spinning Wild Mouse and uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar For those of you who are unfamiliar is the same exact model of Kung Fu Panda Master at Gardaland That is an awful coaster, I mean the layout of Spinning Madness seems a bit more thrilling than the Kung Fu Panda one but unfortunately it has the same awful lab bars that lowers during the ride and also also as the super tight seats. The combo of these two awful factor caused me a cramp on the left leg during my last ride on Kung Fu Panda, so I expect this coaster to be as bad as Kung Fu Panda. The last honorable mention is the Sequoia Magic Loop. Yes, I count the reteaming of an attraction as a new credit, and I have never ridden Sequoia Magic Loop. In fact, I have ridden Sequoia Adventure only one time in 2015, but I don't think that I will get this credit because the attraction is standing but not operating since the park reopened after the pandemic and I think that it will be dismantled during the next years. Now it's time to enter the real top 10. At the bottom of my top 10 we have Vroom at Leolandia that is a kiddie coaster by Preston and Barbieri that was opened during the 2018 season at Leolandia. From the POVs that I watched it looks nothing special but it has a nice setting on the lake and some nice theming. I've gone at Leolandia only one time in 2016 and since it's basically a park for kids and families I don't know if I will ever get to this park again to get this credit. At the ninth place we have Catapult at Mirabilandia, there is a Catapult coaster by Schwarzkopf that only operated for one season, in fact this coaster operated only during the 2006 season. Personally I don't think that this would have been a good ride but I would have been curious to try this super strange coaster. At the 8th place we have two defunct Schwarzkopf coaster that were basically clones. In fact, I'm talking about Zyklon at Gardland that was removed in 1991 and Brontojet at Movieland that stopped operating during the 2019 season and uh, I saw it being dismantled during my September visit to Movieland. I'm quite disappointed because my first visit to Movieland came too late for riding Brontojet and to the other side when Zyklon was removed I wasn't even born. Plus this coaster were literally 30 km distant and I never got the chance to ride one of it. At the 7th place we can find the Spacca Tempo at Miragica at Zamperla Twister Coaster that uh, basically is a spinning wild mouse and is an exact clone of Twister Mountain at uh, Leolandia. I've only ridden two spinning wild mouse 
Kung Fu Panda and Twister Mountain, and the Zamperla model is uh, way more intense and comfortable, plus uh, Spacatempo has uh, some great teaming in the station, and personally this factor adds a lot to the experience. At the 6th place we have a really strange coaster, strange because uh, if you look at this you may be thinking, oh my god I've never seen this super small B&M invert, yes uh, this truck uh, tricked uh, also me, but uh, then I searched uh, on the Holy RCDB and uh, I discovered that Mirage Rosso is uh, a Fabri Astral Coaster, that uh, basically is a family inverted coaster. I don't know, but uh, I have mixed feelings uh, about this coaster, because we are used to see inverts only from B&M and Vekoma. Yes, uh, Intamin builds some nice inverts uh, and uh, Giovanola built like uh, one of it, so I'm really curious about this coaster and I want to ride it so much, but uh, at the same time I'm a little bit worried because the layout of this coaster looks pretty forceless and not thrilling at all, plus uh, it has over the shoulder restraints and zero inversions. Finally, I expect it to be very rough, a real headbanging machine, so I gave this coaster the 6th position on my list only for the curiosity that I have in riding it over the pure ride experience. At the 5th place we have the coaster with the most relocations in Italy, we are talking about Vertigo at Zomarin, that is a looping star coaster by Schwarzkopf. In fact this coaster has been relocated 6 times before arriving at Zomarin. This coaster was originally built at Freight's Park Kirkhorst with the name of Looping Star, then moved to Southport Pleasureland also as Looping Star, then moved to OK Coral called Always Looping Star, to Parque de Atraciones de Madrid as Looping Star, to Pluton Park where it was still called Looping Star, to Lunar Park where it was called... Wait a second, I can't remember the name. A few moments later. Yes, RCDB confirms that it was still called Looping Star. <laughs> then finally, it arrived at Zoomarine and changed name in Vertigo. I want to ride this coaster so bad because it is the only operating Schwarzkopf coaster in Italy and I also want to experience the only circular loop in Italy. At the fourth place we can find the Sierra Tonante that was a wooden coaster manufactured by SDC that operated at Mirabilandia from 1992 to 2007. This was the only big wooden coaster that ever operated in Italy. It operated only for 15 seasons at the park, that is a small amount of time considering that there are wooden coasters with more than 100 seasons of operation. This coaster was pretty big with a maximum height of 35 meters, a maximum speed of 100 km per hour and a track length of uh, 1000 meters. The coaster was removed because of uh, its roughness and high maintenance cost, so the park direction decided to demolish it and to make space for high speed, the Intamin Blitz coaster that came during the 2009 season. I'm really sad that Mirabilandia demolished this coaster instead of repairing it. It could have been a nice hybrid if they only waited a few years and RMC to come. Also because an RMC version of Sierra Tonante would have been way better than high speed. At the lowest step of the podium we can find Senza Fiato at Miragica that is an Intamin accelerator coaster. Yes, if high speed is the Italian version of Maverick, I think that Senza Fiato is the Italian version. Wait was the Italian version of Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. I mean, Senza Fiato is way smaller than Accelerator, but the concept is the same. I say it was because, uh, sadly, Senza Fiato is standing but not operating since the 2019 season. We told the Mirogica Park. I hope that my opinion could be proved wrong, but I don't think that Miragica will ever reopen. The situation at Miragica is really dramatic, because it is all completely abandoned, and from this video you can see that the coaster has also been vandalized. It's very sad seeing this coaster in this state, also because I think that it could be relocated in park like Cavallino Mato or Movieland that desperately needs a new coaster and couldn't spend a lot of money. Senza Fiato could be a perfect fit for these parks because it's small, not too high, because these parks both have uh, height limitation and is also really compact. Plus I think that this launch has a great punch to offer, I mean, 
Also Gardaland desperately needs a launch coaster, but I think that senza fiato it's too small and hard to publicize for a park like Gardaland. At the second place we have Big Thunder Mountain at Disneyland Paris that I missed during my 2016 visit to Disneyland Paris because it was under refurbishment. Big Thunder is a large Vekoma mine train built in 1992. It really looks fantastic. It is long, pretty high and deeply themed, plus I never rode a coaster that goes down a lake. I hope being back at Disneyland Paris and ride this coaster as soon as possible. And at number one we have Miao Coaster at Etnaland in Sicily. That is a twin helix kiddie coaster by SBF Visa Group that I skipped on purpose during my last visit at the park this summer. What? Okay, I'm just joking, but uh, I still need the credit of this awful kiddie coaster by SBF by SBF Visa. Okay, sorry for the bad joke, but at the first place of my missed coaster list we have Eurofigter at Fasanolandia. Yes, it is road like that and I think that someone at Fasanolandia doesn't know English very well, but anyway, Eurofigter, as you could imagine, is an Eurofighter model from Gerstlauer and is the only Gerstlauer in Italy. This coaster is pretty small, in fact it is only 25 meters high and only 400 meters long but uh, we have to consider that Fasanolandia is an extremely small park and I can't even realize how they find the money to build a coaster with the steepest drop in Italy. This coaster is really short but in these 400 meters it seems to pack a lot of intensity. It also features three inversions, a loop, a cutback and an airtime roll. I hope that I could try this coaster as soon as possible also because I think that could be one of the best coasters in Italy. Okay guys, if you have arrived at this point, I thank you for watching, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to be sure you don't miss the future videos. And I'll see you soon on Coaster Idiot. <laughs>